teachers who've had a student that stubbornly believed easily disprovable things. Flat Earth, Creationism, Sovereign Citizen. How did you handle it? I had a trainee bring up the Sovereign Citizen thing, explaining to me how citing admiralty law and such will lead to complete freedom of responsibility from government bodies and he showed me the Keith video from this Canadian dude seemingly having his case dismissed and another guy from Quebec seemingly shutting down cops asking him to register his pets with the city. So I asked him, feigning belief, if he thought we could find some kind of record of the resulting dismissals. This led us to finding an article which was saying that Keith was, I believe, found to be in contempt of the court and automatically found guilty and the pet guy got fined for not registering his pet. The look of utter disappointment on his face when he realized that he couldn't just get out of paying taxes and be allowed to drive without a license was honestly worth it. TL. DR. Do anything but blindly dismiss or humiliate a student willing to sincerely talk, learn, listen and consider. I'd be a moon landing hoax proponent to this day if my teacher dismissed me. Not a teacher but I had a teacher very calmly and beautifully help me as a teen. I was about 14 and in full line the awesomest thing ever mode. While not an edgelord, I had opinions and beliefs like never before because of hormones and crap. Huh. I had phases of conspiratorial belief and was easily swayed by the last thing I'd watched on TV. This was the 90s so I'm lucky that the internet YouTube wasn't yet ubiquitous because I'd have likely gone nuts if so. Yet, the movie JFK and a random. Bootleg Moon Hoax Doc VHS had me a full believer in both conspiracies. Anyway, I take it upon myself to interrupt class one day when the science teacher discusses gravity and how gravity is calculated to slingshot vessels through space. He then mentions the moon landings and I speak up like a clown. Instead of shouting me down or humiliating me he took a very professional approach and offered to hear me out. In fact, he said to make a list of points to back my argument that the entire class would discuss that Friday, a few days away, and he wanted my list of points on Thursday in order to also prepare. So, I basically copy every point the doc made in order to try to appear as intelligent as possible and hand it to him Thursday with gusto. Friday comes and he starts by saying neither of us were on the moon so I cannot refute your belief no more than you can prove it with absolutes. But yet, let us check the likelihoods and or sciences of each point. He spent an hour calmly, rationally disproving each point posed by the documentary. The couple points that were more based in conspiracy than science he used logic to destroy. It sounds crazy but it was the first time I even considered the notion of for this to be true there has to be an army of people in on the conspiracy, all keeping quiet. He beat that by simply asking how well a secret lasts between us students and how quickly rumors spread among us. He didn't disprove the belief I had and I didn't immediately lose my belief of a moon landing hoax but it planted the notion that I should test and ask questions myself before believing what sounds good, entertaining, fun, intelligent, etc. I felt corrected, not humiliated. I was thankful. A good portion of my later love of science came from that day. This is why I believe we should be teaching children logic. Let them have the tools to work out what things they should be believing. I say teach logic every dang year like English and math. Too many people go through life with no critical thinking skills and the world is worse off for it. I was in a class with a student who firmly believed the moon was hollow. Conspiracy theorist. I was getting really frustrated with his insistence on the theory without actually proving it, so I had shot an email to an old science teacher of mine with a physics PhD asking for the actual math to prove it to him. I showed him, on the board of our bio classroom, that the force of gravity that exists on the moon meant that it couldn't be hollow and that we could prove it with math that was replicable on a smaller scale. He then screamed at me and walked out of class. I try to use Socratic dialogue. I ask, leading, questions, and get the students to draw conclusions. Sometimes it even works. Have you ever noticed that offspring resemble parents? How does being taller lighter darker faster etc. affect survival? If this process were to occur over many generations, could the effect be cumulative? I've met many people who have never had a theory like that broken down for them. It's much easier to dismiss evolution when your understanding of it is limited to the theory that monkeys spontaneously became humans. I am a teacher, but this actually happened when talking to an adult neighbor, who is also a really good friend. I knew he bought into a few conspiracy theories, 
some of which I cannot argue with, but when I heard he was convinced the moon landing was faked, I had to know why he thought it wasn't real. His reasoning was no one has walked on the moon since, so I don't think it happened at all. I stared at him blankly and started listing the Apollo missions that I knew landed on the moon, he then googled to see if I was bullshitting. I waited while he read, and quite promptly he realized his reasoning for not believing in the first moon landing was quite wrong, and conceded that all of those missions can't have been faked. I'm a middle school high school science teacher in a very small town with a traditionally conservative mindset. There are certainly parts of our curriculum that led to a lot of pushback from parents and students alike. I typically tell students, I can't tell you what to believe or think. However, as a science teacher, it is my role to teach you XYZ from a scientific standpoint that analyzes evidence in a scientific way. You don't have to agree with it, but you at least should be knowledgeable about it so you can make your own informed decisions. After giving this speech to one of my 6th grade classes, one student's mother started sending me copies of the magazines Today's Christian Woman and Christianity Today. That might have been my favorite response. I teach second grade gifted, smart, students, like Malcolm's class on Malcolm in the Middle. Some of my students are twice exceptional a bit on the spectrum but mostly high functioning. Many of my students think they've got the world figured out, they're just waiting to get taller so they can't take over. Anyway, we were beginning an insect unit and just received caterpillars to observe as they go through metamorphosis. We are talking about what we know about caterpillars and one student. I'll call him Frank chimes in and states confidently that caterpillars are not insects. His reasoning is quite logical and convincing. They don't have three body parts, they don't have six legs, no exoskeleton equals not an insect. He sways about four kids to his side. So a few other students debate this idea. We look at the caterpillars. They have six longer front legs and you can see three body parts, but he's still holding firm. They have extra legs, not an insect. Debate some more. His reasoning is toppled by the others and he sort of quiets down. He's thinking it over. At the end of the day I ask him, Frank, you still think caterpillars are not insects? He thinks on this for a bit. I am not convinced. I respond, the world is not all black and white. Frank, he says over his shoulder as he's walking out the door. I know that. It's all colors done. This is every day with Frank. Flipping the scenario. In my high school psychology class we were approaching the chapter about fetus development and how that can influence what a person will be like later in life. Suddenly my teacher announces that we will be skipping that section because, I crap you not, I don't believe that's how babies are made. I teach at a college, and last year, I had a student who wanted to write his argumentative essay on why the earth is flat. I took the opportunity to discuss with the class the foundation of a sound argument, and why a logos, logical appeal, is the most important part in the defense of a thesis. In order to obtain a solid logos, one must use verifiable evidence from legitimate sources. It was at this point that I told the student that he was welcome to construct his argument, but only if he could find reputable sources from the scientific community who could back up his claim, and not simply the say. So of a bunch of bloggers and youtubers. One week later, he dropped his argument and switched his topic to government spending. I have no idea if the student actually believed the earth is flat or whether he just thought it'd be interesting to argue its point. I didn't discourage his choice of subject, but simply pointed out that he would have to defend his thesis like any of my other students, using all four appeals and five reliable, reputable sources. I teach biology and chemistry for a Christian homeschool network part-time. We meet once a week and run labs and sometimes have discussions. The textbook we use is pretty anti-Darwin and doesn't support the idea that climate change is human caused. My students are very bright but pretty sheltered and pretty stubborn in their beliefs. Obviously the school's mission is to give the students a Christian education and I'm not trying to make waves or make an issue for the principal. What I try to do is challenge the students to think critically about what they think and believe. I have them examine the textbook for biases. I try to shut down bad arguments. A couple weeks ago a boy stated that if macroevolution were real we would have seen it. So I explained in no uncertain terms that that was wrong. Sometimes I'm successful at challenging their beliefs and other times I'm not. We were talking once about if aliens could exist, and most students said no, 
because the Bible didn't explicitly state that they did. I pointed out that the Bible didn't explicitly state lots of things, like dinosaurs. The students paused for a moment to think before one said that the Bible did mention this, and we got off topic talking about if the verses about leviathans and behemoths were about dinosaurs or not. In short, I try to push my students to be a little more critical of sources, and be able to explain ideas arguments past because the Bible says so. I pointed out that the Bible didn't explicitly state lots of things, like dinosaurs. You should use kangaroos, since it doesn't let them spin around in metaphor land. Camp counselor here, boy scout specifically, in an unrelated class, kid, 12-ish, suddenly decided to fight me on evolution. My usual response to this sort of thing is, yes. I believe in evolution but I understand not everyone has the same beliefs followed by a quick topic change. However, the kid stuck around after class to explain why I was wrong. I was pretty limited in what I could say here, but I was rescued by another kid who'd stayed behind. He basically said look, you don't believe there's proof of evolution, but I'm a Christian too, and outside the bible how much solid proof is there of God, she's not trying to fight you, respect her beliefs too. And that just ended it completely, nominated rescue kid for our honor roll and that was the end of that. That kid was a massive bro. I mostly just downplay it unless the student is really insistent, to the point that it interferes with class. Some examples. Prior to 2012, I'd get a student now and then who was really into the Mayan apocalypse thing. One semester I had an older woman taking my geology course, because she wanted to switch careers into teaching high school science. She was pretty much convinced the world was ending in 2012. So I asked her why are you in college, then, why prepare for a new career if the world is ending she didn't have a response for that one. I once tangentially mentioned Calvin and thermodynamics as an early example of science attempting to determine the real age of the earth. One of my students declares that the Egyptians invented thermodynamics and white people stole it from them later. There were a few other similar examples that day in the following class. Weird beliefs centered around ancient Egypt. I asked them where they were getting it from. Turns out they were attending lectures at a museum where a guy would just gather a crown in an exhibit hall and spew conspiracy BS. Apparently if you were a suit and are standing in a museum, everything you say is real. She quit the class before the first exam. Not enough pseudo-Egyptology, I guess. One semester I had a student who believed everything. Everything. Hollow Earth, alien visitations, ghosts, eugenics, NASA conspiracies. He thought the Sethiad of Mythos was an actual ancient religion. He claimed he'd seen a UFO several times, calling it telepathically on one occasion. Thing is, he was passionate about these topics and did a lot of research on them. I tried to steer him towards legitimate science, which can be just as fun and astounding as the fake stuff. But, there's only so much you can do in one semester. Also, he followed me out to my car while talking on just a few too many evenings. Flat Earth is making a comeback. Thanks, Twitter. Recently, a couple of guys in my class were talking about it during a break. They at least knew what my response would be, so they bring me in by asking could it at least be possible after some of the usual debunking. I told them to check out Concave Earth and get back to me. Next class one of them comes back, says he read about it and tells me that crap was crazy no more talk of Flat Earth after that. Back in 2010-ish, I worked with a girl who believed in the whole man apocalypse thing. I asked her why she continued to come to work if she knew the world was going to end, and what she's planning to do if the world doesn't end. Her answer, and I'm not making this up, was that she liked the job and she planned to kill herself on the 21st of December, 2012. Not a teacher, but a friend insisted on doing a presentation on why the anti-vaccination movement is a good one. He's in jail for murder now. That escalated quickly. Not a teacher, but in 9th grade a classmate told our English teacher that his ovaries hurt. Her face was half shock half laughter because she didn't know whether he was kidding or not. She eventually had to explain what ovaries are and why he doesn't have them. It's nice that she didn't overreact. I'm a para in special ed middle school. This crap is my daily grind. All our kids live to some degree in fantasy land. Some more than others. 
Some of them are never going to lead independent lives because of their inability to separate fact from fiction. So far I've found asking them to prove it, with the full support of the teaching and therapy staff, works the best. They either drop it or we do research proving their idea is fantasy. If this upsets them, we work on having healthy emotional responses. Every time one of the kids who struggles with understanding reality versus fiction answers a question religiously I want to sucker punch their parents guardians. You child does not need religious teaching when they think that gravity doesn't always work or that monsters, all monsters we asked, are real or that our eyes don't need light to see after our science lesson on how we see. Props to the Parapro. It takes a special sort of individual to do what you do. Special in a compassionate and patient education wrestler wrangler sort of way. Not a teacher but during a geography class where we were going over play tectonics a student insisted the seven continents were North America, Mexico, North Africa, South Africa, China, Britain, and Europe. The teacher kinda just spluttered for a second and got her I am not dealing with this right now look and kept on teaching. I teach students with mild to moderate disabilities. Some of them are more prone to believing wacky conspiracy theories. I've had 9-11 truthers, students who believe in the Illuminati, etc. I just always provide counter arguments in a non-condescending way. I emphasize the need for critical evaluations of internet sources. Oh man, I'm not a teacher but this girl in my AP world history class, high school, obviously, kept insisting that the pyramids were built by aliens and since my teacher is a G he told her to prepare for an intellectual discussion. Even though everyone thought she was stupid we were all pretty hyped. He came and dressed as Bill Nye the next day, ticed full booty and all, and made an entire powerpoint explaining why it was a load of crap and she wrote her crackpot theory on a sheet of notebook paper. Obviously she didn't buy into any of his arguments because anyone who buys into such an obviously fake conspiracy doesn't really care about what's true or not, but we didn't have to take any notes that day, so there's that. She had obviously been briefed on the presence of a secret base under Cheyenne Mountain. Props for the Bill Nye impression though. I teach homeschool classes, and often have students who insist the earth is only 6,000 years old. That makes it difficult when we are looking at Indian mounds that are 8,000 years old, or Silurian fossils. One started to argue with me, and I replied that the Bible might count time differently, and used as an example the people who were said to have lived to be hundreds of years old. It probably wouldn't stand up in a debate of me versus their church, but it quieted them down that time. My high school bio teacher had backup assignments during the evolution section. Most students weren't stupid enough to think evolution equals monkey man, and this teacher even mentioned how a lot of the events in the bible match up to scientific evidence of how earth has changed. Pretty religious state. So he would do this to bring it back to most students comfort levels. There was this girl in my graduating class who was pretty religious and an extreme jackass when it came to anything challenging any of her beliefs. One time in health class she started arguing with me that tanning beds don't cause cancer. She got PIEIs that evolution was being taught and threw a massive fit. Basically she spent that section of the class in the library doing busy work that I promise you was nowhere near easy. I used to be one of those students. Oh god I can't imagine how crappy I must have been. I was intelligent and quick thinking. I could hold my own in an argument, but what it came down to was the fact that I was told blatant lies, flat out untruths, and I was told them by people I trusted who had PhDs, so it's not crazy that I stuck to my guns. From my point of view the Jedi are evil it was common sense to believe in 6 day young earth creationism because that's what the facts that I believed pointed to. For the record, I was told the following lies, among many others. There is no new information provided after a mutation in DNA. There is no such thing as a beneficial genetic mutation. No new species have ever arisen due to evolution. The starlight and time argument. How can we see stars billions of years away if everything is only 6000 years old? Is rubbish because either God created with the appearance of age or the speed of light wasn't always constant. The big bang was a bang like a bomb explosion. Not a super rapid expansion of space. Hence the argument if I blew up a paint factory would it create the Mona Lisa in fact, the big bang was so badly taught, that it seemed like pure idiocy. 
When I finally sat down and learned about it I realized how normal and sensible it sounded. Whatever bulls the irreducible complexity brigade was spouting at the time. Evolution was untestable in a lab setting. The fossil record is wildly incomplete and any drawings of intermediate species are just pure speculation. No intermediate species have ever been found. That last one is the one that put me on the right track. I saw photos of intermediate species in the fossil record. Fish with proto legs and stuff. Then I knew I'd been lied to. I had been told point blank that fish with legs were a joke. Thankfully, the logical tools I'd been given with which I was arguing for this vacuous crap were now able to be used to think for myself. When examining each of the above claims myself online, and not only in the creationist literature provided, I was able to find a wealth of information I'd not even known existed. It made me furious that clever people I trusted had lied to me. Sure, some of it was simply them passing on bulls they thought true and so wasn't a malicious lie, but to have a guy with a PhD in genetics say that mutations in DNA don't provide new information is like a pilot saying that gravity is a myth simply because he can fly. It's a malicious distortion of the truth to further his own ends. The upside is that I know firsthand that if inquiring minds with the right framework find truth, then the truth wins. I'm glad I was taught to seek truth and to reject things that didn't line up with what I knew to be true even if it was uncomfortable. Bet my parents never understood the real value of what they'd teach me. Heck, lungfish and mudskippers are alive right now. You don't even need to look into fossil records. The problem with flat earthers is that their entire theory doesn't hinge on scientific evidence. It explicitly hinges on ignorance of evidence. The only evidence they have to support their argument is that the world looks sort of flat if you stand on its surface. That's basically it. Everything else is them scrambling to explain how all evidence to the contrary is a conspiracy or a misunderstanding. Flat earthers are basically conspiracy theorists. Not basically, they flat out are. Round earth is a conspiracy. Conspiracy theorist. I used to be a very closed minded person. When I look at gay people on the street I would think inside that the guy will go to heck. I always read the bible and follow it word by word. I always think of how unfortunate people are outside of my belief because they are surely gonna go to heck. Then one day in class our group of 10 decided to make a perpetual motion machine. Motogen set. For our project. The idea is great but then I noticed that it's too simple to be true. If this perpetual motion thing works then the great scientists of the past should have already made one by now. Our project's design is not even complicated and complex. I did some research and came to the law of conservation of energy. We already discussed this topic a year before in school but this time I felt something different. It's like a switch was flipped in mind. I learned the intuitive approach in that law and not just simply solving word problems with it. I realized that physics is not just solving worded problems. That's the moment I started loving science. It had a domino effect in my life. I noticed that I started being open minded on religious stuff too. I don't think bad of gay people anymore and I don't mind whatever anyone's belief is. P.S. Our advisor in that project explained to us why it will not work but still decided to build it because we are very darn persistent. I left that group and joined another because my group mates believe it will work despite my explanations. It did not work. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.